it's Anna, and today I am coming to you from my potato patch here in the back side of my garden. As you can hear, uh, there's some cicadas up here making a lot of noise, and if you hear a few bangs here or there, there are people next door in construction. So those are pieces of wood being thrown out into a dumpster in the back. I really can't buffer against that, so sorry in advance. I am really excited to harvest these potatoes because they are one of my favorite things to harvest. You never really know what you're going to get when you pull them out of the ground. And I think it's very satisfying to pull them up and dig around and find the biggest ones. I harvested a few of these earlier this week because they were ready sooner and I really couldn't wait. At first I was going to do them all for you, but I really wanted to get them out and see what they were like. And later on, I'm also going to harvest a few of the sweet potatoes. So you can see the difference between the sweet potatoes and the regular potatoes. They grow a little bit differently. Regular potatoes are tubers and sweet potatoes are actually roots. So it'll be a lot of fun to see the difference. How do you know when they're ready to harvest? It's one of two things. The earliest you can harvest is when the flowers are done blooming. Right here at the end, uh, the flood. at the end of this, there were little flowers earlier in the season, and when those are done blooming, then it is safe to harvest. Or you can wait until the plants start to wilt, and at that point, you can harvest then too. That's what I did with this other area behind me because I didn't want them to rot in the ground. So I will take with me, and you'll get to have fun right alongside. I will flip this over now, and we'll see what happens orient to you. This is the back end of the garden. The trees over there are mulberry trees, so we have delicious fruit earlier in the summer. These vines over here are the sweet potato vines. This patch in the center is where I harvested them earlier this week. I just left these plants here to dry out and I'll incorporate them into the soil. And then over here is the rest of the potatoes. And this vine right here is my cantaloupe. It's kind of taking over. I'm hoping that I'll get some more fruit out of it. So here is what is left of my potato patch. I accidentally let this uh, Creeping Charlie kind of take over. You really shouldn't let weeds grow this much into your potatoes, but the roots aren't very deep on this Creeping Charlie, so I figured it wouldn't really harm them too much. And let's start pulling this out. So what you do is you want to pull on the vines and find the base of this potato. So I'm going to pull here and yeah, right here. You see where all these are coming out? This is where you, I'll pull it out and see what we have. So give it a good yank. Here it comes. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Oh, yep. Ooh, this is kind of, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, there are a few. I was hoping that the ones over here would be bigger, but they're not. So, hmm. Not sure exactly why. Maybe I should have waited on this one. Um, let's see. That one. And then, of course, this is also further back. And it gets a little bit more shade than the other one. So we'll see what this one looks like. And pull it up. Let's see. So let's turn this over. And again, not so great. Uh, the other ones, which I thought would have more, actually had bigger potatoes. Let's stick around and see if there's more. Hmm. Nope, I'm not seeing too many. Well, let's just stop with these two. I'm going to leave the rest of these to see if they will grow a little bit longer. I think I will wait on the rest of this for them to wilt and then see what happens. Um, I'm going to pop a picture up right over right over here and you'll get to see what the harvest was from earlier this week. In the meantime, let's move over to the sweet potatoes because I can see those popping out. And here are the sweet potatoes. So let me show you here. Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, right here. So you can see this? See how it's popping out of the ground? That is when you know you should probably harvest it. So we'll see how many we have over here. Uh, let's see. Ooh, there's a few. Um, 
Well, oh yeah, there's a good size one. So there's that one, there's one, there's two, there's three and four. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good amount. Oh yeah, so yeah, this is one that's a uh, pretty decent size. It's pretty close to what you get in the supermarket. And the rest are a little bit smaller. Once again, I think I'm going to leave the rest of these. I've only got five more of the sweet potatoes. And we'll see if they grow a little bit longer. So stay tuned. So because that potato harvest was slightly disappointing, I'll go ahead and walk you through the garden as it looks today. Right over here is my lettuce. It is really going to seed. So either tomorrow or Saturday, I'm going to film a video on how to collect the seed. It's actually pretty easy. And next up is the Swiss chard. We like eating it, but I think I planted too much for how much we actually use. Oh, and over here are the beets that I planted in that other video. The germination rate on them wasn't so great. I'm not sure if that was the soil here or the batch of seeds that I had. Uh, a lot, we had a lot of rain and issues, so, but I'm glad that I have what we have right here. And over here are the peppers. We've harvested a lot, but there's still a lot on here. These are the Tabasco peppers that should be turning red pretty soon. And then my shishitos are finally producing more. It went through a lull of a couple of weeks, either because it needed to take a break from production or because it got a little bit too cool. And here are my green beans. See, yep, there's still a lot of green beans on there and they're still producing. As I said in a few videos back, I thought that it wasn't producing enough, but every day I've been harvesting, I would say one or two cups and over time I'm getting the amount that I like. And as you can see, leaves are turning kind of yellowish so they're on the decline i would guess in a week or two the production will slow down and then stop and over here the zucchini that i had to do some surgery on it's actually thriving so i'm getting a few bits of zucchini every other day and my potato or not my potato my tomato patch is a little bit rough we had a really large windstorm come through here and these twisty towers did not do a great job at all of supporting them in the wind. And they're so heavy that I don't want to attempt to pull them back up onto the towers because I'm afraid that I would break them completely. So I'd rather them have the juices and the water flowing through them and produce more on the ground then I would take the chance of breaking them and then stopping production at all. And here are my beets still doing pretty well. And down here is kind of the overwhelming area. All of my squashes and melons have, and cucumbers have really grown together. And it's really hard to walk through, but we'll see. So I'm gonna walk, pull this aside and set very carefully. I do sometimes step on squash uh, leaves, which is inevitable. Next year I'm going to plan differently so this doesn't happen. And there's a lot of powdery mildew here too because it's late in the season. And I should really get rid of those leaves, but I just haven't been doing that. Step over here. And you can see over here, where'd it go? There, is, there it is. So there's a butternut squash here for me, which is exciting. I'm not getting as many butternuts as I thought, uh, but if I get one or two, that'll be okay. I planted them way at the end right there, and they seem to be crawling all the way back here. There are my cucumbers. They're doing really well. I'm gonna harvest a few of those. And then my acorn squash is over there. And then, as I said earlier, over here is my uh, cantaloupe growing out that way. So I planted too much too close together. So we'll see what comes of it. Next year, all these vining plants are going to go on trellises, which will save me space. And I won't have to worry as much about them taking over this end of the garden. And they'll be in full sun. So that will help production and growth as well. 
And then these were my onions. They failed because it was not quite enough sun and they got choked out by the cucumbers. And then over here, I'll go back this way, we've got my carrots. I'm actually really happy with the carrots that I'm getting. So let's pull one or two up and show you. So these are the tallest ones and they should have a pretty good root on them. I'm going to feel around to the base. Um, actually it doesn't quite feel ready. Let's see if there's one that's popping up over here. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, these over here, if you can see that, you can see the tops of them. So I'm going to pull up and see what happens. Oh, it broke. It happens quite often. When that happens, you can just take your hand like this and kind of wiggle it out. Huh. I'm try my dominant hand. I'm a right-handed person, so left doesn't always work. Let's see. Oof, this one's in there. Oh no, I broke it! <laughs> well, you can see it was a really good size. Let's see if the one next to it will come out a little bit easier. Yep! Oh, there we go. So, this is really nice. These are dwarf carrots, so the fact that they're small is okay with me. Let's see, let's keep going on down the line. It should be easier as we go. Yep, oh, this one popped right up. And then let's get this one here. Hmm. It's not going to work it so I don't break it. Oh, there we go. Oh, yes. Look how beautiful that is. I really love it when a carrot comes out like that. Oh, it's so satisfying! And I harvested a lot of these, made a really, really delicious carrot top pesto. So what you can do is you can save these and blanch them and turn them into a pesto, like you do with basil. It's really good. Let's see if I can get any more. Hmm. Oh. And these down here look pretty good. Let's see. Oh yeah, that one's ready. There we go. So... And this one looks like it might be too. Down here. Oh, yep. This happens quite often, uh, especially with carrots. They either hit a rock or just kind of grow funny. So it's actually really common to get funny carrot sculptures like this. And then goes one down here. It's a pretty big one, should be. Oh yes, look at that. It's huge. Oh yeah, that's very satisfying. Let's start setting these aside over here. I'm going to pull a few more here. This one is a really tall one, so let's go to the base down here and see how that one comes up. You can't really see the top of this one um, until you kind of pull away the soil, so hopefully it's a good size. Uh, nope, actually it's not. So sometimes a thick stalk like this can indicate a really big carrot, but sometimes not. So you can't always judge the bottom of the carrot by the top. But you could probably still eat this anyway. And over here you can see that orange spot right there. I'm going to pull this one out. This one looks pretty ready. Let's see. Oh yes. Beautiful. Oh, that's perfect. And as you can see, it's growing right next to a bunch of other ones. So there's another one right here that I can pull out kind of in the center. I'm going to cover this back up. Cover it up, fill in the hole. And let's pull, I'm going to see that orange one right there. I'm going to pull this one out. Yep, it's still pretty fat. And I'm going to leave the rest of these in here so they can grow a little bit more. Uh, the cool thing about carrots is they'll kind of push on each other. So I can leave the rest of these and they should get a little bit bigger because this one is out. As you can see, carrots are kind of a coin toss when you grow them. So uh, you never know what you're going to get. 
I'm gonna pull this one out over here. Let's see. Oh, this one's in here pretty good. Uh, come on. Oh, yep, another giant one. It's a lot of fun pulling up carrots. And there's this other one over here that got exposed. So I'm gonna pull this one out. That's a good size. So. And this one right here, I'm gonna pull out. Oh, yep. And here's another picture perfect one. I really like it. I think that's enough for now. The cool thing about carrots is you can leave them, they're a root crop. So I will probably harvest a few more in about a week or so. I'll let these catch up. So I'm going to stop here now and I'm going to go harvest what else I can get today and then I'll show you my total haul. And here is today's final harvest. I've got the beef steaks over here, the San Marzano tomatoes here, cherry tomatoes, more of the summer squash, and shishito peppers. I'm excited that those are back. We went a couple weeks without a lot of them. The carrots, green beans, and the golden and sweet potatoes. So in regards to the potatoes, ignore what I said earlier and harvest them after the plants have wilted just to ensure that they have enough time to keep growing in the soil. And that's all for today. In the next video, I will be showing you how to harvest lettuce seeds so that you can grow your own next year. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye.